Fun fact, but not that fun. Did you know that most home remedies and over-the-counter acne products don't work? And even worse, they can actually really damage your skin. I know better than anyone. I know. I know you know. So, yeah. What what What's up with you? What happened? Oh, I had I, su- I suffered from acne from when I was like 11 years old to when I was 30. 30? Wow. Yeah. But do you know what actually does work? Prescription treatments. That's why we're excited to partner with Apostrophe, the sponsor of this episode. Apostrophe is a prescription skincare company that offers science-backed oral and topical medications and are clinically proven to help clear acne. Apostrophe connects you to a board-certified dermatologist who will create a personalized treatment plan that's perfectly tailored to your unique skin. That's very important. Yeah, all you have to do is fill out Apostrophe's online quiz about your skin goals and medical history and then snap a few selfies and your dermatologist will create your customized treatment plan. Apostrophe treats acne and they can also help you hit your other skincare goals like reducing redness, wrinkles, and even dark spots. That's what I use it for. Wrinkles, like these fine lines that are coming in, they're just creeping. They're creeping in on me. And then like dark spots. I have like new dark spots and dark circles. So yay, age. But luckily <laughs> there's uh, things that help. So we have a special deal for our audience. You can save $15 off your first visit with a board certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com slash STDTY. When you use our code STDTY, this code is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash STDTY and click begin visit. Then you use our code STDTY at sign up and you get $15 off your dermatology visit. That's A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E dot com slash S-T-D-T-Y and use that code S-T-D-T-Y to get your dermatology visit and save $15. And we thank Apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. I wish I had this. So much. I know. I really do. Well, you have it now. That's right. (laughs) You're welcome. Hello and welcome to the shit they do not tell you about podcast. Hello and welcome to shit they don't tell you. And my name is Steve Green. And And I'm Nikki Limo. And today we are talking about a very, very, very special topic indeed. What? We're talking about my wife, Nikki Limo. Oh, it's sick. Wait, are we really? Yeah. You said we were talking about Ric Flair. I know. (laughs) You tricked me. I tricked you. What the hell? I tricked you good. Well, for those of you who do not know this, yesterday was our three year Mm -hmm. i'm sorry our four year wedding wow get it right thank you very much yeah we did a whole episode on our anniversary we sure did about about our marriage so let's not bore them with love again well no this is not what this is that's not what this is okay this is a hate one i'm gonna roast you now (laughs) that's what you would do for me thank you very much no i wouldn't that's way too much Uh, work this is the greatest things in the world about Nikki Limo that wow. anyone can learn from. This is a real ex- episode? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm curious. I'm intrigued. So if you're listening, you're like, well, I don't really care about Nikki Limo. Mm-hmm. Well. That's what I'm thinking that people are going to say. You can learn from anybody. They, they literally, like Mindhunter is a show about people who checked out like what was going on in the minds of serial killers. Yeah. So, so everybody so has thing. something <laughs> valuable. Everybody has something valuable in there, right? Right. So, oh, that's true. You know what? The other day I was watching a video um, where they interviewed a sociopath and he was like very open about everything about it. And he's like, because finally. you're born that way, yeah. he can't like change it, but he can do his best to not contribute to the bad parts of the world of humanity. Mm-hmm. And so he like consciously checks himself and stuff. It was really interesting. That is interesting. Anyway. What yeah. was he saying about, about being a sociopath? Well, about how um, like he from a young age could outsmart his teachers. He had a hard time understanding emotions like why people would get so excited when something good happens like jumping up and down and going oh my god doesn't make it more good yeah, yeah, yeah. so he had a really hard time understanding that but then once he learned how people react to things emotionally he would use that to manipulate them mm-hmm. and because th- being able to make them feel emotions was the closest thing to him being feel- being able to feel emotions which is really interesting so he's almost like blending yeah, but he realized that it hurts people, you know, if when he manipulates them in a certain way, it's just so easy for him. Wow. And he has like a high IQ, which a lot of, there's a lot of sociopaths that do. Right. Um, that become C- CEOs, politicians. YouTubers. YouTubers, yeah. So, it okay, makes cool. sense. Well. Anyway. So this is the greatest things anyone in the world are the greatest things in the world about Nikki Limo that anyone can learn from. That's the key, is anyone can learn from this. That's sweet. Okay. That's really nice. Number one, I really, um, 
like, dude, the other day, you are lifting, you're holding a, an LCD TV mm -hmm. while you reach for screws with your feet. With, yeah, with one foot on the with ladder. one foot on the ladder. <laughs> I was not home for this, obviously, or I would have been helping. Yeah. I was completely gone. Yeah, exactly. I had to be resourceful. If I... If I couldn't reach the screws and I didn't do it that way, I would have had to take the whole TV down yeah. and like pick up the screws, then pick the TV back up. You and could it was have just, dropped the TV though. I, it was a risk I was willing to take. Okay. My, but the point of that is I really do believe, and I know there are some limitations, but I don't really know what your limitations are. Oh. Because you fucking picked up screws with your feet <laughs> while you're holding an LCD TV on your own. People had commented that that's such a Filipino thing to do. A lot of Filipinos use their feet as hands. <laughs> I mean, I've done that it's with true. laundry when I was a kid. You just don't want to bend over and pick up your socks or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you pick them up with your mm -hmm. feet. But like that is a whole different level for me. Picking up little screws and being able to grab them. I don't know. Yeah, it's where yoga practice probably came in handy. You know, like doing tree poses and you're like, you know, focused on your isolating movements. You know, it's got to be something like that. Poses. But no, my point is, I don't. I, I've I know you, um, and especially since we you know we we know that. You have a lot of excuses that you could make in, in life, like like at any time, mm. but you never do. Like you were a latchkey kid, like you had like like you didn't have the greatest time growing up always, and like I just have always seen you never really bitch about things, and you just sort of are just like, hey, this is what I'm doing, and fuck you. That's true. Once I've decided to do something, yeah. yes, and there's I'm I'm willing to accept all of the struggle involved with that thing. You know, I've I've thought about every possible thing that could go wrong and I'm willing to take the risk involved. And so yeah. if something goes wrong, well, that's on me, you know, like that that was the risk I knew I was going to take. So I'm not going to bitch about it um, because I already accepted taking that risk. And you might talk about like with me, you don't do this like outwardly. And that's why I want to talk about this, too, because a lot of people see the way that you have a work ethic and a schedule and stuff. And they go, well, I can never be like that. But with me personally, privately, like you tell me like this is hard. Right. You know yeah, what I mean? But is. like outwardly, you don't want to bother anybody. Yeah. With that. That's and very I've true. always admired that about you. Aww. Because you, you know, you know when you're at home you can check in and like like release yeah. that valve. But that being said, I am a huge brat. Like I'm a brat when something unexpected happens. Yes. You know, I plan for a certain level of things or like a certain like this could go wrong, this could go wrong, this could go wrong. And I feel like I put a fair amount of time into analyzing all the things that could go wrong and accepting the risk. But if something unexpected happens yes. that I was not anticipating or like maybe I wasn't even planning on doing a thing, just, you know, we had an unexpected tax bill come in right. and it ruined my budget that I had planned for the rest of the, for like this quarter, mm -hmm. you know, and I will freak out because... Yep. I already had planned for enough bad things and not this bad thing. But like your body, um, like accepting a certain fluid. Yeah. And that could be sexual as well. Yeah. Your body knows how to filter it out. And then you get to step two, which is how do we solve this, right? Yeah, but you, yeah. have to sol you have to filter it out first. I have to scream and cry, but not to anyone but my husband. Yes. I don't, yeah, I don't really like to involve people. No, you don't want to lay it the on struggle. them, which no. we share. We share that, yeah. by the way. We, but um, I will... Throw a tantrum alone. Yeah. Yes. Or around me. Or melt into the floor. Yes. Or quit for a day. Yes. Or I'll just walk into the kitchen and I'll see you laying on the floor. Completely yes. laying on the floor. Yes. Or planking on the floor. I've yes. seen all of those. All of all of the above. Check, check, check. Well, that's what I mean, right? Like, so to to humanize you a little bit, because everyone sees you as this Amazon goddess. <laughs> Is that what everyone sees me as? <laughs> oh, you saying, know what? You know what Steve they, was referring to? Yeah. For those of you who don't know, I have a vlog channel called youtube.com slash Nikki. I haven't made an announcement video on this channel yet because this channel has always technically been my main channel. Yeah. Um, and so the vlog channel was called the vlog channel, but now I honestly see my vlog channel as being the main channel and oh, this sure. is the podcast channel. But I didn't make an official announcement, but here, that's wow. what he's talking about. I didn't even know. That, that's official. That, it's official then. Yeah, I think it's official. I think it's official. Yeah. Um, I'll make a fi an official announcement. Yeah, and also, by the way, it really helps when you guys support us on Patreon. That has been a huge help for for us. Oh yeah, for yeah. this show been especially. really helpful for this for the show. Yeah, I mean, I'll talk all about that on the announcement video of why I chose to just put podcasts on this channel. Yeah, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. I was just trying to add some context to 
what people might be calling me an Amazon queen. No, no, no. But because when they see you do these feats, it just looks like you can't miss. On my miss. vlog channel. On your vlog channel. Yes. You can't miss. Like you you will set up a chandelier. Yes. You taught yourself like how to be an electrician almost. And like your ground and wires and all shit. You know what? I also feel, and I don't know if this is on your list, is I'm just so grateful that, and I can't see your list. Okay. Okay. I'm just so grateful that we're in an era where information is at our fingertips, where you can literally learn anything. Like you used to have to go to college or a trade school to learn a skill, but right. now you can literally learn anything you want to for pretty much free, for free or almost free with the internet. Yeah. And to not take advantage of a resource like that, to, to try to even make an excuse of like, well, I don't know how to, hang a chandelier is ridiculous to me. Yeah. So I I just feel like in my head, if there's someone out there who made a stupid YouTube video about it and they can do it, I can do it. Yeah. And that's kind of the mentality that's, that I have when no, I, I go know. into that. I know yeah. that. That's what I mean. That's why, um, yeah, I, I think that you really have no quit, even though you do quit. I've never seen you quit. You said I quit. You've told me you quit. You quit YouTube. You quit podcasting. You quit everything multiple times, but you never actually quit. <laughs> So I think you have no quit. I think that you you just talk shit. Yeah, about me. About yourself. Yeah. yeah, but that's what I mean. You're talking shit about yourself and just going like, I'm done, fuck this shit. And you get frustrated, but yeah. you come back down you know, to to yourself and go, Cause this is not what I want. There's a lot of life left, you know? You can't like quit for the whole rest of the life. Right. <laughs> like you quit for a day and then it's like, okay, this feels like I've quit for a long time. Yeah. Like I'm ready to get back in. Exactly. Um, she's also ridiculously human. And by that, I mean, like, um, if you do something, if you do something like logically, like, like say you, like with what you decided to do with not eating meat anymore, mm -hmm. like you are very human as far as like how that came to you. Right. You were like, well, I don't know if I want to eat animals anymore. I like animals too much and all this stuff. But then you kind of found your middle ground with it right you didn't just go all the way declare like put the flag down and say i am this yeah you like slowly found like what you prefer about it yeah i don't like labels i think that people once they declare a label and this maybe this is just me personally but i feel that once once i declare a label it's like making a commitment to being that thing right so if there's anything I change my mind about, it's like I can't change my mind because then I have to, then I can't have that label anymore. Mm -hmm. So if I found a whole community based on that label, but then I find things I disagree with, you can get kicked out of that community right. or like feel like you're, like you have to, yeah, exactly. Like yeah. you have to fit in all the way or agree with everything in yeah. order to stay in that community. So yeah, I never said I'm a vegan or anything like that. I never called myself any label. Mm -hmm. I said I'm trying a plant-based diet. That was, I said that. Yep. I changed all the Tasty Tuesdays to plant-based, which people had a huge problem with, but. For a while. I I couldn't physically like cook meat anymore. It made me, it was, there was too much of a connection to the images I saw. Yeah. So yeah, um, but I didn't want to tell other people how you to. You never judged eat. anybody yeah, either. Yeah, no, you don't, you don't it was just that. a personal thing for me. You don't like wipe it in somebody's face and go like, this is why you should do that too or whatever. And by the way, I understand why vegan, why there's a whole community that does that too. Like I understand mm -hmm. watching videos and seeing enough information that's like, it's enraging and it's like, I want, why doesn't everybody know about this? But ultimately that's not how you change people's minds. And it's also not feasible to judge everybody based on that. No. Yeah. But I like that though. That, Thank you. That's how you reached me with the subject. Cause I have to say, I wasn't like, I wasn't, I was one of those like, you know, unfortunately like about eight years ago or maybe five, there was a joke about how annoying vegans are that everyone did. It was super hack. Yeah. But it like really was pervasive and it was like, like effective as far as branding vegans to me. Yeah. I, I thought it was all so fucking annoying. I even made that jo those jokes when I cooked meat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude, it just, it was just. Like we all heard about it so much, yeah. but it was really just something that got hit upon a bunch by like comedy and stuff. Yeah. It wasn't like it was like, it was, there was a hint of true to it that is what got extracted and put out into the public, right? Right. Because there are those vegans who are just like complete like psychos about it. Well, the loudest members of any group are the ones you hear about. Yeah. And they're the, and they're the quote unquote representatives. But yeah, they're exactly. They're super chill, 
so many more chill vegans that I that totally. I've met, like in and meat like meat non meat eaters plant based people and it's so much easier to be plant based over the past five years even than it was you know back then absolutely I know so many people that swore they could never stop eating meat that are full on vegans now and I'm not I'm not even a full on vegan I eat I eat fish still can I ask you this hmm. if they were to develop a method. And this is just curiosity. Okay. If they develop a method for them where they grew meat in a lab, would you consider oh, yeah. that? I always thought about that. So yeah. when I first stopped eating meat, absolutely. One, one thousand percent. I would eat the meat grown from a lab mm -hmm. because it really was the ethical part of it where I just didn't want, I didn't like the factory farming idea yeah. where animals are just born to be slaughtered. Right. It's so gross to me. Um, but if it was run on a lab, yeah, like then you don't, you take that factor out. Now though, after not eating meat for so many years, I don't even think I'd like the taste of it. Right. That to makes be sense. honest, yeah. like there's nothing I miss about it. I, I missed, that. I missed it the first year or two, but then after that, yeah, there was, I don't know, I don't miss it at all. I think Kevin Smith was saying that too. Yeah. He, he went, he went like hardcore vegan just for, because his doctor told him to. Right. Because he had a heart. Didn't he do issue. like the potato diet? He did the potato diet Yeah, first. where he yeah. just ate potatoes. Yeah. And then he did the, like his daughter got him on vegan shit. And then I think his doctor was like, hey, this is working. You should keep doing it. Well, uh, Danny Trejo. Oh, really? I don't know if he's vegan or his son is. I can't remember, but Trejo's Tacos is yeah, all yeah, vegan. Yeah. I love Trejo's Tacos. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Or they have vegan options. I think or, they have vegan yeah, options. Yeah, vegan yeah. options. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, no, I like that about you and that you're not all like um, social media wor worrying about it, like telling everyone what to do. Yeah, like that's just, not my style, but you live and let live. Yeah. Which I uh, I like. Uh, I think it does reach more people. Um, you are ridiculously loyal. Yeah. Like sometimes to a fault, but aren't we all? Um, <laughs> no, we aren't all actually. <laughs> no, and yeah. it's very heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you are, you are very, very, very loyal. So person. are you. Yes, but I would say sometimes, uh, and this always sounds like a compliment. Like I think I'm loyal to a fault. Yeah, yeah. But I, but I think we I'm both... just too honest. Yeah, exactly. Is the thing. The problem with me is I'm too nice. Yeah, I think exactly right. <laughs> so exactly, but that's what I mean. It sounds like that, but I really am roasting myself because yeah. I have just stepped in so many dog like that's dog very shit true. piles with friends sometimes that it's just absurd. Where like you really shouldn't. And you would warn yeah. me because you're a very good read. Yeah. And you'd be like, I don't know, man. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. And then you're like, I don't know. And then <laughs> sure enough. It's easier from the outside. Of course. But I, I like how I admire how exactly loyal you are. And I wish that I um, was able to not meet people and just immediately throw the benefit of the doubt like in, in, like in a sack of potatoes at them. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, I feel like I give people benefit of the doubt. But... After a distinct pattern has been established over and over and over again, I'm talking like three times or more. But see, that's what that's what, yeah. that's healthy. I think I do it in a wrong way where I'm like, hi, nice to meet you. Benefit of the doubt. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think I've proven that yes. <laughs> multiple times. Um, I mean, you're funny as hell. Look, you're so funny that. And I think that it's funny too, because you're funny on camera, obviously. But I think you're you you do something when you're off camera that is ten times funnier than I, I think anybody even knows that you are. I wish it could be the other way around. Well, <laughs> but you're you're already good. I mean, you're already doing. Well, thank it. thank you. You know, obviously, like you know, when it comes to writing or, or, or writing comedy, like you you do that. You could do that sleepwalking, right? But but the things that you do, don't even know that you're doing are nuclear compared to the things that you do well it's because i retired from being funny I'm, I'm only serious now i understand well uh you were blowing me away the other night with <laughs> we had a couple friends over and yeah you're right i wasn't even trying that was like you were just throwing dimes like constantly without even knowing and then we'd all like be uproariously laughing and then you're like wait what is everyone laughing about <laughs> well so there was this thing i i remember and it happens in a bad way too not a bad way, but like I get misunderstood in a bad way sometimes where, and this might have to do with being on the spectrum, but I look for accuracy. And when I'm pointing out accuracies, sometimes I just blatantly say the, the most accurate thing. And sometimes it's a fucking cold cock <laughs> shot 
to the fucking back of the head of, of whatever su- the subject matter is. Yeah. And, sometimes and everyone's like, it's wow. like a very specific, detailed, accurate roast. But I wasn't intending to roast the person. It was just an accuracy thing. Yes. But it was this was a song, actually. But yeah, it was fantastic. Well, I said that Smash Mouth was good before they went Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> so good uh yeah so and that's the thing too is like and my next one is is incredible work ethic i think that um when it comes to really anything with you you have like a pattern of the way that you attack things the way you get things done that i think anyone could learn from or like try to emulate as well like um i mean dude look just look at the way that i mean when you do your vlog channel, for example, Mm -hmm. like you'll sit there and you will edit in your pajamas, like until it's done, you won't even move. You'll barely even drink water or eat anything. Like you're just locked in on whatever it is that you get done. Once it's done, then you go eat something. I've seen this. Mm -hmm. Then you go get your water or you go, you know what I'm saying? You don't even fucking move sometimes. You do this too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I, I think, you know, it's i think it's a it's a quality in people who get things done like mm. I, that i think is good but but i think that you do it way better than i do um like i admire the way that you can just lock in and just non-stop drill on it oh it's this um never-ending thought in the back of my mind that if i don't get the thing done that i'm going to be in trouble and my dad's going to yell at me <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no, I, that's, and that's why you panic about it sometimes. I panic a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, uh, but I do work the best under pressure, even though I hate it. I hate that about myself because if I try to get something done early, yeah. it sucks. Yeah. It always sucks. And yeah. I'm like, wow, I took my time. I got this done. Good for me. I pat myself on the back and it would always be like the essay that I got a B minus on. Whereas the one I did at three o'clock in the morning, the night before it was due a plus 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 plus. Do you have a process like or a mentality when you wake up like like here's what I'm going to do or anything like that? Like how does that go? Yes, I have to. Um, So I have a bullet journal. I've talked about this a lot on my vlog channel and Instagram, but um, I have a bullet journal that's set up like it's a journal and planner in in one, but it's weekly. I set up, uh, I do a whole spread where I list every single thing I have to get done that week, like personal things, work things, everything, anything that's due, any events that are happening that week, like if some, someone's birthday or like recently we went, took Nate out to dinner for yeah. his graduation. Yeah. So I write. Magna cum laude, by the way. He graduated magna cum laude. Nate. We don't know what that means exactly, but we. It's Greek. I remember. It's Greek. It was good. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, yeah. So I write out every single thing that needs to get done for the week. And then I start placing those things on the week. So it starts with the things that have a time scheduled, like appointments, classes, um, you know, an event or whatever. I put those on first and then it goes into like, okay, when can I fit this in? What day could this fit on? Yeah. And I start like putting them there. And then I have a to-do list for each day. Cause I mean, naturally like I see, okay, these things have to get done on this day because it's the only logical time they can get done uh when do you feel like you've dropped the ball when i didn't get the thing done okay like when if i had to get five things done on the one day but you had to get six things done well like if i well if i had to get five things done and i only got two i see because the first two took way longer than i thought right i feel like oh shit i'm like gonna be sprinting the rest of this week because I don't know where else I can put these other four things. They were they only belonged on this one day. So the other days are usually kind of full. Yeah. So I, I try to keep one day kind of open because in case of that, but that's been a, a work in progress because that doesn't always happen. And then I you know, I freak out like and usually it's the things that I, I want to get done, like for my schedule, like for my channel or for my mm-hmm. you know my projects um things that have deadlines that other people are relying on me for those always get priority because disappointing people is probably the hardest thing uh i'd ever want to face well you, it's very seldom happens but um when, when when does something stack up so high for you 
like just to relate to a lot of people out there mm -hmm. like when does some, something stack up so high that it's almost has to fall by the wayside for a little while before you're ready to attack it again if it's just um so things are kind of like puzzles and mm -hmm. i like puzzles a lot like you like escape you don't like escape rooms i don't like escape rooms i love rooms. escape I find rooms very frustrating and i feel like i can solve them every puzzle can be solved but if one's just getting the better of me and like each task can be a puzzle sometimes so sometimes I think like, for example, editing a video, um, sometimes I have an idea of how I want the video to be and it's just not lining up that way. Mm -hmm. It's just not happening that I didn't get the right shots or I said the wrong thing by accident. I have to reshoot something or whatever. And it's just like, I just encounter problem after problem or like I'll accident, the, the application will crash and then I can't find my work again or, you know, like too many things in a row went wrong or too many things on the outside started coming in, like people needing things right now urgently, and then it interrupts the process. Um, yeah, that's when I think I am just like, I can't do this. Like I can't, uh, it's just, no, the puzzle's not coming together. And how do you, do you like orbit the problem, like from, from afar and try to like survey the puzzle and see how you can fix it? Or do you just attack it one piece at a time? Mm, how do you get back on track? One piece at a time for sure. And also I just have to, look at it with new eyes later. Mm -hmm. Like I have to. Do you have to put it away? I have to put it away. And I do this thing that I don't even know if it's the healthiest, but I, I'll go and play like my poker app mm -hmm. game mm -hmm. just to completely clear my mind yeah. of everything I was working on. So my mind will get 100% focused on the poker game. And it doesn't have to be a poker game. It could be some other activity that takes 100% of my mm -hmm. focus. Um, and then that way, when I come back to the thing, it's brand new eyes. But sometimes I get really locked into the new thing and I can't stop focusing on that. Well, especially if it's if it's, new, if it's a new interest. Yeah. Which poker is for you right now? I mean, it's kind of a revisited interest. I have the same hobbies that circle back every like few years. <laughs> but um, your vociferous obsession with yeah. things like can be very Yeah, well, I'm very, I'm goal oriented, yeah. okay? So in this particular, poker app yeah, take me through the, your goal because <laughs> so in life i have my you know like i have five-year goals and i have one-year goals and i have the monthly goals and i have like everything's broken down and i'm very like hey here's where we're going and here's the baby steps to get there and like oh i can do these baby steps and that's how i get things done in this poker game the the end you can win these watches <laughs> that you can wear at the table and everyone thinks you're super sick everyone can tell them. exactly yeah it's status symbol Exactly. And, but they're only available for a limited amount of time. So you have to win a certain amount of hands in a certain amount of time in order to get the watch. And so sometimes it's like, oh, there's only six hours left and I need to win like 180 more hands. And so holy shit, I will just stay focused on getting that. How long thing. is a hand? It depends. I mean, and it depends on if you lose all your money or not. Like, because everyone could fold or whatever, like quickly. Like, how, how uh, much it depend on? It's hard to explain because it's it really depends on the. Ha I mean, you could be playing for hours and then lose all of your money in one hand. So then you have to wait to get more money again. Dude, I will hear this chick playing this game, and I'll hear the cha-ching, mm -hmm. like the the chime thing, and yeah. I'm like, I think she won money, but I don't know. No, it just means it's your turn. Oh, it just means it's your turn? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Because then I'll come up to you and I'm like, how you doing, baby? And you're like, oh, $70 million. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> Fake I'm, money. I'm Fake like, money. Oh, yeah. I, I'm like, I heard some cha-chings. Nobody thinks that you're worth $70 million. Don't worry. Well, you don't know. Google <laughs> seems to think that I'm very, uh, oh, yeah. my those, net worth is very classic. high. That's always classic. Uh, yeah. Well, no, that's great. Because I think that a lot of people... When they when they hear someone t who's productive talk, it just sounds nuts. It sounds like somebody in a different stratosphere. I could never be like that. I'm the most messy, organized person you'll ever meet. I'm the most lazy, ambitious person you'll ever meet. It. I feel like I'm just a dichotomy of these extremes. You're just a real person, though. Like I'm either all the way in or all the way out, and maybe that's where that loyalty comes in. Yeah. Because. I can't, there's no middle. There's yeah. no, I'm either like 100% we're going for it or like, fuck it, I'm out. Like, I'm just gonna be in my hot tub, <laughs> my jacuzzi with a cocktail. I quit life. But not for long. But not very long. But yeah. not for very long. No. Yeah, well, uh, we're gonna do a quick break and when we come back, more amazing things you can learn from my 
beautiful wife, Nikki Lima. I can't believe that you're able to prepare a whole hour of this. I told you. Wow. All right. Well, buy whatever we're telling you to get. Fun fact, but not that fun. Did you know that most home remedies and over-the-counter acne products don't work? And even worse, they can actually really damage your skin. I know better than anyone. I know. I know you know. So, yeah. What what What's up with you? What happened? Oh, I had I, su- I suffered from acne from when I was like 11 years old to when I was 30. 30? Wow. Yeah. Adult acne. I had the, yeah. full, the full blown. And that is that because like you were just using the wrong products and... Um, I think it, yeah, I mean, absolutely. It didn't seem to matter what I used over the counter wise. I needed like extra help. Well, do you know what actually does work? Prescription treatments. That's why we're excited to partner with Apostrophe, the sponsor of this episode. Apostrophe is a prescription skincare company that offers science backed oral and topical medications and are clinically proven to help clear acne. Apostrophe connects you to a board-certified dermatologist who will create a personalized treatment plan that's perfectly tailored to your unique skin. That's very important. Yeah, all you have to do is fill out Apostrophe's online quiz about your skin goals and medical history and then snap a few selfies and your dermatologist will create your customized treatment plan. Apostrophe treats acne and they can also help you hit your other skincare goals like reducing redness, wrinkles, and even dark spots. That's what I use it for. Wrinkles, like these fine lines that are coming in, they're just creeping. They're creeping in on me. And then like dark spots. I have like new dark spots and dark circles. So yay, age. But luckily <laughs> there's uh, things that help. So we have a special deal for our audience. You can save $15 off your first visit with a board certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com slash STDTY. When you use our code STDTY, this code is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash STDTY and click begin visit. Then you use our code STDTY at sign up and you get $15 off your dermatology visit. That's A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E dot com slash S-T-D-T-Y and use that code STDTY to get your dermatology visit and save $15. And we thank Apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. I wish I had so this. So much. I know. I really do. It's well, awesome. you have it now. That's right. <laughs> You're welcome. Welcome back to the shit they don't do. They don't tell you about network. Shit and, they don't tell you. And it's not a network. It's we're a podcast. talking about how, all the things you can learn from Nikki Lima. It was just our three year wedding. By Steve in, Green. It was our three year. It was our four year <laughs> wedding anniversary. Keep saying three year. I know. You really wanted to I be had to three keep years. That going. <laughs> it was our four year wedding anniversary, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and eight years together. Really? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Uh, you know, and these are all the things that I think I learn from you constantly um, that I think anybody could learn from. And, and, and I'll, look, I'll, I'll tell you what the origin of this came from real quickly. Okay. For those of you who, who are like, well, whatever, you're yes, such a mushy know. asshole. Yeah, I would like to know. I was watching um, like a thing with Mark Cuban on like Vanity Fair and he's talking about like what you should do with your money and stuff. And I just didn't think it was real. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's so successful uh-huh. that... I was just like, well, sure, you can say that, but are you really, is this really? What you would do with it? Well, something that anyone can actually do. I see. You know, and, like, and, the, and, and I know that what he's saying is, is good and effective, but I had that thought real quick only because like, you know, my, I remember my formative brain coming mm-hmm. up like in my 20s and just being like, what the fuck do you, like, yeah, right, you're not a real person. I'm not going to talk to a billionaire about this. I want to talk to somebody who's real about this. Yeah. And that's why I think there's a lot of people, you know, people always say this. I've heard Joe Rogan say this too, where he's like, you know, it's funny. There's so many people who are not, they haven't made it or they haven't killed it or whatever, or they're not like multi, multi, multi millionaires and they're giving advice. But I think that it's because there's a bunch of people out there who are like, I don't believe you when it Mm. comes to like the mega rich people. It just seems like they're so detached from humanity that I don't know. I think that there's a lack of credibility almost inherently. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not relatable. Like I see you take a helicopter to work Uh and I just don't think I could ever be like you. Right. Right. So I just think that there's better, like not necessarily better examples, but more realistic examples that people could like look at and go, Oh shit. I, I, I can listen to this person and learn something from them. Hmm. So that's all. I I know that this sounds like a love letter to you in a lot of ways. 
I, no, it I sounds do. like you just call me a seven out of ten. You're like, you know, you can't get the ten out of ten. I don't think you made it. I just don't think you made it. <laughs> you can get the chick that's a seven out of ten though for sure. Oh my god, not at all. <laughs> no, kidding. I think that. I mean, you if you wanted to, you could be a billionaire. I really think that about you. I I, I think maybe I will be one day. I I have no question. Yeah. If you put that as a goal, I had no question you could do it. But that's not one of your goals, right? Yeah. Like you're not like a money motivated well, person. Well, I don't think money is a goal. It's a tool. Exactly. So, so and I know that already. Yeah. But, I, I mean, money, I feel like people that think they, they have this number of like, when I get this amount of money, that's my goal. I don't think they understand the value of money. Like what, like, what do you want it for? Yeah. Like that's really what the, what, that's really what you should be striving for is what you want the money for. Yes. Instead um, of just wanting a number. Right. Like when I was growing up, mom's like, if I had a million dollars, but like, what yeah. would you do with it? Right. Like, what would you actually do with Eminem it? Eminem has a whole song about it. And now he has a million dollars. He doesn't do any of the things in the song. No. He said he'd still be robbing armor trucks. He, dude, he also says he can't even go to Target, which sucks. He he's, can't go to Target, yeah. He's a millionaire can't go to Target. Yeah, he can't go to but Target. But they have a great online section. I, have to I say. actually want to do an episode about, uh, we did an episode recently on our on our Patreon, patreon.com slash sticky. Um, we do bonus episodes called After Dark, and it's stuff that we're going through currently. And I wanted to do an episode on the, like, re- like reassessing the your metrics of success yeah. because I've had like a a shift lately that I'm like yeah actually I don't want this like it's almost like this thing that you've been looking to all your life that you're like if I could just have this this yeah. this like I feel like I'm at a point where the curtain got pulled back a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. and I was like oh that's what that is well, like I don't actually I don't go want into that. that a little bit be more detailed what, what like what do you mean well that's why I want to do a whole episode on it I see yeah because it's it is a lot more detailed okay so hold off that's a nice teaser stay tuned wow. yeah I'm very teased. but what you're saying is I, I I completely agree with when I would watch people be really neat and organized I was like well I'm, I could never be that person yeah, like, I'm, I'm just I've always been messy my whole life it's been part of my identity that I'm a messy person like my parents call me a hurricane you call me a hurricane yeah. and my parents called me that too mm -hmm. like you could see where i've been because i leave messes wherever i go yeah and that's always been part of me and it's like i accepted that i was like i'm a messy person i don't like that i wish that i was more cleanly and organized i admire people that can do that but it's just not me right and then you know i've read a lot of books and especially this one lately that i read last year called atomic habits and i did a Big mood episode on it, mm. Chief Competitor. Cut that um, mark. But maybe I'll recap some of it on a shit they don't tell you episode. But he's all about. It's by James Clear, by the way. If you, great book, if you want to check it out. But um, he's all about making these one percent changes, and that like you don't have to have that be your identity forever. If you really do want to be an organized person, for example, it's a. It's not about instantly overnight. Like you reorganized your house, and now you're going to be an organized person. Yeah. Because a lot of people think that, and I thought that. I was like, oh, I bought organization stuff, and like, look, my house was organized, and then it would fall apart the next day. It's too you know, yeah. Because you hadn't changed the habits, mm -hmm. you hadn't changed the little things that actually make you an organized person. So yeah, we had organization bins, but there'd still be clutter everywhere because my habit wasn't putting things away. Right. And so his whole thing is one percent changes every day that add up that compound over time, and create a new identity for you and how every action that you take is a vote for being this new identity mm -hmm. so if you're like i want to be an organized person and there's a mess in the kitchen and you go oh, i'll clean that later you're making a vote to continue being a messy person but if you go you know what let me just clean this up now you're making a vote to be a cl clean person that that's you're gonna like i'm gonna put my vote in today this is the person i want to be yeah and each choice that you make like that is a vote and at the end of the day you don't have to be perfect you don't have to have 100% of the votes, but if you have the majority of the votes, then you start to become that person. And it's habit forming. Exactly, because of that. Yeah. It's exactly because of that, but that's how you create the habits. And he breaks down exactly like what makes a successful habit formed and what makes it not successful and all this stuff, and it's really great. My parents tried that when I was a kid. I'll never forget. They had um, a rule in our house, like after my dad got fed up by coming home to constant messes, they said, if you don't make a mess, you don't have to clean it up, okay? And then they came up with this, they took one of my little brother Kenny's diaper, uh, or wet wipe yeah. um, containers, they cut a little slot on the top of it, and every time that you did something, you you like, 
you like put down a little note of what you did and you put it in the slot and then they would pay you an allowance, right? But the problem is, and you know, I know quite a bit about tokenomics thanks to crypto, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, hashtag crypto corner on our Patreon. But um, they had like an inflationary problem with this thing because they were still just buying us stuff for just being their kids. Oh, right. So we didn't just look at doing the work as getting a reward. We were like, well, we're going to get a reward anyway, and we'll if we do that, then maybe we'll get even more. Uh, it was just a bonus. It was a bonus. So this yeah. is totally, it, 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 guess what? They ruined the economy <laughs> of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They they had an over-inflationary like, like problem. Oh, yeah. And so we were all like, well, fuck this kind of money. This, you know, working for this sucks. We already get it for free. Mm, yeah, we didn't get shit unless we uh, saved up our allowance and bought it over it wasn't a very big allowance either they so never tried that until we were already in our teenage years and mm. it was already like whatever <laughs> um okay the next one is that you and i think this is healthy for anybody but not for everybody always because everyone has a fucked up some people have fucked up families but you absolutely love family yeah and but and by that i don't just mean your family mm. but you love the idea of family yes so like the like when it comes to us forming our own family like you're into that so those of you out there who are like, well, fuck my mom or fuck my dad. It's just about like the idea of maybe being the one that you wanted to have the whole time. Yeah. You know, and I think that you're, I don't know. I, I, um, I always knew like when I remember being like an 18, 17, 16 years old and be like, I'm gonna have a family probably when I'm like 20. Yeah. Or like 18 max. Cause 20 is so old. Right. Yeah. And I remember thinking that like 22 was so old. And here we both are. We both have like, you know, careers obviously impact everything and nothing stuff. But but even just last night, we're talking about like wanting to have a family still. Yeah. And, and even though we're, we're both goal oriented, we have plans that we want to do in life. Like, I just love the way that you put it to me last night when you're like, you know, like my sister's moving maybe yeah. to Texas. Like, um, well, our thing was like, well, maybe we don't have to have kids because we have so many nieces and nephews. Yeah. It's like so many now. So many. But then they're all moving, like, and it's not in our control. So your sister and our niece and nephew, her, like, from her yeah. family, are moving to Texas, possibly. Yeah. Your other brother and his, the niece and nephew from him, they're already they moving to Oklahoma. Moved to Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. And then my brother and my nephew and our godson, um, they're moving to the UK. Mm. And it's like, okay, well, now we have zero nieces and nephews. Yeah. And that I that idea of like kid sharing, yeah. like the like, oh well, we'll just be cool auntie and uncle is gone because gone. we don't we can't just easily visit them anymore. So I'm like, yeah, and we can't control that. We can't control we that. We can't control what they do with their lives, and we we support it like, exactly. Go do your life. Nor would we want to control it. No. But yeah, but if so, it's like, wow. Well, maybe we do want to have kids because I do like kids. Like I like I like that. I, I just. Know. Yeah, it's tough, man. It's tough. But yeah, no, me and Nikki, for those of you who don't know, we, we kind of stopped worrying about the idea of having We kids. stopped trying. We yeah. stopped trying. We were just like, we, we love our life right now. We don't want to like inter inject a kid into it. And now... Um, well, maybe it's that idea that you were talking about earlier where it's like we're revisiting with new eyes. Yeah. You know, we quit it because the puzzle pieces just didn't match and yes. it wasn't fitting. Yes. And then now it's like we're kind of looking at it with new eyes again because we took a break. I think so. Yeah. Because even we were just in Santa Barbara with Archie. Or not Santa Barbara. We were in Long Beach. Right? Yeah. But with my nephew. Our nephew. With our nephew. Our godson. Yeah. And watching you with him, it just did something to me. Same that was with you. Unbelievable. Yeah. Watching you with him. Stupid. You're stupid. It's all mushy. I know. You sorry. said it wasn't going to get mushy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But no, I, all I mean by that is like, so those of you who are like, man, fuck family. I've always gotten along more of my friends. You can create your your family. That's that's what I think yeah. that we're we're going to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we're we're sad that some of our families, leave, like all of our families leaving, mm -hmm. but we're excited we're gonna make to our make our own. own. And that's what I think anyone can do that I'm excited about for, for everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I'll, okay, the next one is that um, you have a dedication to your craft, even if it's an emerging one. Like if there's like, who knew about podcasting? Like even 10 years ago, fucking nobody. That's true. Like who knew about YouTubing even like, you know, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. like it didn't really exist. So 
you, but you have a dedication to it even as it emerges and evolves. Anybody could quit and go, well, the algorithm and all this shit, but you just keep on going. And that's true. The algorithm is a bitch. It's a fucking bitch. Yeah. But there are ways to still be dedicated to your craft, even if your craft. Well, it's just you can't put your self-worth in the things that the algorithm controls. So right. you have to know why you're doing it, why you're doing the thing you're doing. And if that's stronger than the algorithm fucking with you, then you'll keep doing it and want yeah. to do it and be happy to do it. Yeah, and I think for me personally, I always admired that about you because I was very mad at YouTube for what they did to my YouTube channel. Yeah. And um, I was just like, well, you you can't realistically like count on YouTube to, to make a business or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you have shown me that you can or that you can still dig in and find a way. You can find the things that make you happy about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I just love that about you. Yeah, I'm. well, thank you. I mean, that's, that's part of the reason why I stopped up uploading videos on this particular channel. Yeah. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, this channel, but if you're on audio, my main, quote unquote, main channel was youtube.com slash Nikki Limo. And I don't know if it's because it's an older channel and the older channels seem to get messed with a lot more. Um, but I started my account in 2007 and I've gone through so many different phases of like, sketches and vlogs and personality content and all this stuff and i don't know if the algorithm can't handle it or what but that channel this channel always gets messed with yeah. it just always it's happened multiple times ever since where, you were a firearms manufacturer well that especially. happened last year and that was like the that was the yeah. straw that broke the camel's back where i i've gotten demonetized so many times during my the 10 years i was like constantly uploading and it's heartbreaking each time like it's because you have to start over again and it sucks because it's not that people aren't interested anymore it's that they're literally not showing your videos to people's feeds yep. any and like overnight like it'll be like a steady run and i get like when things just kind of fall out of trend and people yeah. lose interest i get that and i you again anticipate it. i anticipate yeah. a certain level but I'm talking where it's all the time, it's gonna get an average of let's say 50,000 views, and then overnight it jumps off a cliff and goes to 20,000 and never comes back up. Like it's like from now on your your ceiling is 20,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay, those 30,000 people didn't just leave overnight. It would have been a slow trickle, a slow like drain, a fall off if it was the loss of interest. Um, so it really is the algorithm. Mm -hmm. And then I would get a slew of comments being like, your videos aren't popping up on my feed anymore, your mm -hmm. videos, and then I'll get so demonetized. I'm your husband and that happened to me because yes. I'm subscribed to you and your videos would not pop up anymore. So it was very frustrating, especially if you're counting on that to build a business on or like as a career or whatever. Um, my vlog channel on the other hand, knock on wood, has never yeah. dealt with those yeah, issues. So far, and so, good. so I, yeah, I just am happier there. Even though it's less people, yeah. it's I'm happier there. Yeah. And same with podcasting. It's like even if it's less views or less people are tuning in, I'm I'm happier because the stuff that I'm putting out is something that I want to be out in the world. And maybe the algorithm will catch up to it. Maybe it won't. I don't know. But it's not up to me. I can do what I can do, and that's that's it. Yeah, you know, I can work with the SEO. I can try to have thumbnails and titles be good, but there's really a limit on how much you can do. Yeah, no, and uh, I don't know, and it's frustrating and I've seen that too, like you're a human being and you've been frustrated at it, but you just never yeah. quit. Yeah. And I admire that very much. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, next one, and you might cringe a little bit. Uh-oh. But you're very charitable and you don't really talk about it very much. Mm, that's uh, true. But that's, I just wanted to well, point that you. out. That is very cringy. It's very cringy. <laughs> well, no, it's a cringy if it's about you. I understand that where you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. But, well, because, yeah, I would not, I, I don't like being like, I like just donate this and, much yeah. into charity you and you should that. too. You yeah. Do I do uh, try to donate a certain portion of my income to various charities. Yeah. And that's something I remember being in my 20s and never even thought about really until I remember I was, um, God, what was it? I was, doing something and then somebody was mentioning that they're donating a certain portion to charity and i was like oh right i was like i'm actually making enough money where i could do that now yeah and then that became an option for me yeah but it's such, it's such a mental flip where you have to go like oh wait that's right 
I'm not completely fucking destitute. Like I can actually <laughs> do something yeah. like that. But um, you don't ever even really tell me when we're donating that's charity. That's true. Yeah. Like that's what I mean. Like you don't talk about it. <laughs> I always also forget to get receipts and like give them to my tax people. Like oh, a right. lot of people, like you should, you should you write should. it you off, should. Yeah, right? Yeah, that's a smart financial thing to get do. The I benefit. just, it's like, I don't know if I just forget. And I also like, that's not what I'm thinking about at the time. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So we'll move on quickly from that. Thank I don't want to make you uncomfortable. Thank you. So she wants to know everything there is to know. <laughs> that's something my mom would be like, Oh my God. Yes. Even, this is the child that would not stop asking why. Even if it's from a complete stranger and we don't know their credentials. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, teach me. She's like, what do you got? Because you just want to know everything. Well, yeah. And even if they're wrong, like I'll find out later. Well, right. But that's what's so <laughs> funny about you is you're, you have an unlimited curiosity in things. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever brought up a subject where you're just like, roll i roll i don't care you'll break my balls like last night i was watching a star trek mm -hmm. movie you're making fun of me obviously yeah but you would sit there and watch it with me if you weren't falling asleep true i would say my only argument is i hate politics like i really oh yeah can't stand to talk and it's not really it's not because it's not interesting it's because it's too heated and it's also um i also is i feel like that's like the algorithm to me where it's yeah. something i can't control yeah um, so it just feels like an energy suck to put energy towards it. I think it is. Unless you're, I mean, unless we're talking about, Hey, I think I'm going to vote this way or whatever. Yeah, sure. But it, anything other than voting, I, tax. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, she's also, and this won't help anybody, but I had to throw this in here. She's the biggest pain in the ass of all time in the best way. Oh yeah. Tr I, I don't know about the best way, but I am a pain in the ass. You are last night. Mm-hmm. You're like, you wake up, your eyes are going to fall out. Yeah. And you're like, my eye is going to fall out. I fell asleep on the couch. Yes. And when I woke up, my eye was burning. It was yes. on fire and it was blurry and I couldn't see anything. And it was scary. So I panicked. And you panicked in a way that is just, I was like, she, she's like, I'm going to lose my eye. And I'm like, you're not going to lose your eye. How do you know that? <laughs> How do I? And I'm like, how do I know that? Because you've done this a thousand times. That's how I know that. You know how I know it? Because you do this all the time. That's how I know that. That's, it could be different. Uh-huh. But that's why I, uh, you know, I expect it from you. I know you're kind of like that. And so it's just funny. You could be a grounding force for sure. But you're my grounding force too. Like, that's what I mean. Like I, when I'm a pain in the ass. Yeah. You come out of nowhere with like this grounding element of like you oh, yeah. just become a stone boulder. When for other me. people are freaking out, I instantly go calm. Yeah, and that's and but that's not something everyone would think about you. They that's think true. you're gonna melt into the floor all the shit. No, I become a rock. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah. I don't I can't explain it. It's like the most counter other than like a maternal instinct almost, where yeah. like this baby is crying and I need to be like completely calm and take care of it and give it its needs and put it to sleep. Yeah, you can be an instant counterweight. And then later I'll cry in a corner. But exactly. Like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, and this is part of the last thing, too, uh, or, or when, wanting to know everything. Mm -hmm. Like, you're trying to get better at 10,000 things at a time. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about the frustration about that? Yeah, I, tr I don't like that because... I realize that people that just focus on one thing, thing get ahead because they're only focused on that one thing. And someone explained it perfectly that there's this analogy I watched in a video that's like when you're trying to succeed at too many things, it's like building 10 houses and laying one brick on each house at a time. Yes. It's like it's going to take you forever to build those 10 houses. Yes. And so, and if you don't abandon some of them, you know, and that's kind of how it's felt is like, I have, yeah, way too many interests and I don't know which one I like more. So right. I keep doing all of them. Right. <laughs> and I don't feel like I get ahead necessarily. And they shift constantly. They like do. Your interests. Yeah. Like lately, obviously home decor is like. Yeah. It's up there. Yeah. Because well, you've been nesting. Yes, I've been nesting. I also, once I realized with the first room. So this is the first house we've ever owned where you can actually like make big changes if you want to. Like you can paint the walls, you can put shelves up, you could do anything you want. So once I realized I could transform a room, it's like, 
well, I don't, I no longer have to settle for these rooms that piss me off that are so basic that I, and I hate them. Like I hate everything about them. I don't have to settle for that anymore. But now that I know that I have this potential to transform a room, it's like, well, okay, well, I got to do it then. Right. And then I do it and it's like, it's very time consuming, but I can't look at a room that has potential and not change it. And uh, so sometimes I'll catch Nikki in the hallway and she's just staring at a wall. And I'm like, you're fucking visualizing this shit. Because, only because sometimes I'm like, why are you staring at a fucking wall? And then she's like, I'm visualizing. So now I know yeah. when you're doing that. And I'm like, this bitch is visualizing. <laughs> it's like when you're on a website. I don't know if you've ever been on a website where like um, you could like see what this paint color looks in your house looks like in your house yeah and then you can like switch the paint colors and it like shows you what it looks Super like on cool. your wall i do that in my head where i'm like just shifting I'm like okay what would and then what, what accents would go on that color if it was that color mm -hmm. and then i shift to a new color and then i get a whole different inspiration idea see i try to do color. that and then my brain goes oh we're overloaded we're fucking we need to cool down oh yeah. I'm like, like if I try to imagine like the wall in front of me with zebra stripes, I can see it for a second. And then I'm like, oh, I don't know if this looks good anymore. We'll shut down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I imagine the zebra stripes and then I'm putting pictures on the zebra stripes and I'm like, no, not that picture. And then what about a plant? Okay. Wait, oh, a plant looks good. We'll keep the plant there. And then like I could go on for hours. Yeah, that's... So sometimes I look at a blank wall for literally an hour. I could look at a blank wall. I can see the zebra stripes. I could put two picture frames on there max with mm -hmm. silver frames. I see them. Silver? Nice. I would do gold. Oh, so with, with zebra print? Yeah. Oh, I like it. I see it. I, I like it. Yeah. Um, but once I go above three objects, my brain gets overloaded and we're like, we need to calm down. Calm oh, down. That's Ten like minute this, break. There's an app called Design Home and you can't put like more than three items out at a time that you didn't pay for. It's That, that reminds me of that. So the, I have that the, rule. It disappears. Like it's the first one will dip, disappear. So there you go. Okay. Um... You have never created anything out of malice. No. Which I admire about you because I feel like half of everything I have ever created is out of malice. Yes, this is a point we disagree on a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I know. But I, I admire this about you. It's okay. it's not like I have the right way and you have the wrong way. I am I genuinely admire the way that you you're I mean, you're a very nice, kind soul and you let that reflect in your work. And I think I'm a kind soul as well, but I allow my anger to feel you feel me yeah 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 so i think you're wrong <laughs> i know i know and i i and i admire you oh well thank you that's all well you were like it's not like i think i'm right and you're wrong but no i really think that i'm right and you're wrong <laughs> well if you can be productive yeah i mean I okay so, so my idol eminem is fueled by anger yeah so i get that i get yeah people who are motivated and filled by anger. And I yeah. get you, I get you 100%. And I'm not saying that inspiration is wrong. Well, let me put it like this. Yeah. I have made all my videos that I have made, almost like 90% of them have been out of some kind of malice towards something. Yeah. And and it's not like I'm just sitting there so pissed at it or whatever. Yeah. It's really just like, oh yeah, that I hate when that happens. Oh yeah, that'd be funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like um Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean I've done that sketches like that where like I get pissed off about something and then I write a sketch about it. It's like transmuting the dark energy exactly. into light. Exactly. I'm yeah. filtering it out. Mm -hmm. Like I'm actually and and I've I'm bringing joy to people with it, hopefully. Yeah. That's the goal. And so it's kind of a, a positive feedback system for me okay. that I think has been productive for my anger. Well, I like that. But I think a lot of times it's I like don't an communicate that and mm -hmm. I just say my anger fuels me and yes. then people go, holy shit, this dude. But like- if That you, is exactly- <laughs> If you ever talk to any of my friends, yeah. they would not tell you I'm an angry person. No, you don't, you're not an angry person. I wouldn't classify you as an angry person. Yeah, but it sounds like it when I pitch it. So right. I've done a poor job of pitching it is all. I think that some, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. I guess you just did a better job at explaining it right now. Well, I don't always do it because it's not always funny to. So sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, the anger feels me. Oh, and then yeah. people are like, you know, I was on JK News recently and I was like laying into that pretty thick. Uh -huh. And then everyone's like, oh, yeah, any little thing. I'm like, oh, any little thing. I'll fucking like grow like a big, tall tree. <laughs> and then I'm going to cover everyone else's light. You know, I'm gonna sit, you know, and that's funnier to me yeah, than just funnier. sitting there and going, I want to explain myself. It's very funny. I'd rather do that. Yeah. So that's all. And, and because I have the benefit of knowing of knowing myself yeah who you really are then i can just fuck around like that and have people think that about me while i know myself yeah so i've always been that way and so that's why i can play a little more i think mm. that's all 
I used to do that um, about being dumb. Like, oh, yeah. You know, because. You do it for me sometimes, I was, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was only getting sent out to play like ditzy roles. Mm -hmm. Like, and so I would just stay in that character. It was more fun anyway because she didn't overthink things. But you can drill those roles, though, I have to say. It's fun. It's because the way that you look, the way that you talk sometimes. Yeah. It just makes it very easy. It's the same way that for some reason, uh, that motherfucker who played Steve Jobs in that movie Jobs, not Ashton Cushman. Yeah. But yeah, the other cat. Yeah. He, it, but and he's also that. Magneto. You look at that guy and you go, he's probably a genius. Mm -hmm. Just by the way his face looks. Yeah. You're like, he's probably a really smart guy. It's called typecasting. Yeah, and that's why Ben Affleck was the dumb friend and why Matt Damon was, you know, um, um, the, the genius. The smart, Will, the, Will Hunting. Will Hunting. Yeah. Good, good Will Hunting because they both just knew like, hey, dude, I don't look like that. Like compared right. to you, bro. So yeah, it's just, that's just, you know, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. I get it. It is what it is. But then, yeah, so sometimes I would just be that in real life and uh, and sometimes people would really believe that. <laughs> yes. Well, that's what but happens I, when you do that I enough. I, you yeah. typecasted yourself. Right. And then everyone thought that was real. But I knew who I was. Inside. Right. Yeah. And that's beautiful. Yeah. So it was just funny to see the way that people would react to me. It or gives to you me. incredible power. Yeah. <laughs> that's why. When, it's like observational. When I met people because of my trolling videos, they're like, I thought you were going to be such a dick. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, oh my God, like that's so funny because I'm I don't, I'm not that way. It's people true. who really know me know I'm not that way. But I have a tremendous sense of self, so I don't mind that people think that. Yeah. It's just that sometimes if my own family or somebody thinks that, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right. I get very confused. That That is frustrating. Yeah, it's very frustrating. Yeah, it's like my family, so when I was like 16, I rear-ended somebody or like, but barely, like it was like, well, no, no, actually, I, I rear-ended someone pretty hard. Yeah. Um, and now, like, forever, I'm a bad driver right. in their minds. It's a meme. But I'm like, that was almost 20 years ago. <laughs> Can there be a statute of limitations? Um, also, it's just like, you rear-ended people. Like, I'm, like I'm, the, a lot of the people that are that in my family that call me a bad driver, I'm like, you've done that too. So I don't get why that sticks with me. Yes. But they love to get my goat about it. Well, speaking of that, um, if you tell her she can't do something, she's going to absolutely destroy it, <laughs> which is why nobody should challenge her. We need to use this power responsibly. Nobody say Nikki can't end the space program. Please. I would like to progress as Look a out, society. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I, I've just seen that so many times. Aliens are going to end the space program anyway, because like they better all this. All this stuff's getting revealed, ma'am. In June, baby. You know, so June. you better believe we're talking about on the shit here on the shit they don't tell on you. On the network. shit that they don't tell you that they do not tell you on the network. Um, okay, next one. This one I love about you. Um, you're not materialistic at all. Yeah. But you're not judgy about people who value material things. Right. You're not like I'm not materialistic, and therefore I'm better than. You're yeah. like it's just not for me, but I get why people like that stuff. It's like a it's like different love languages, basically. Right. I think it's kind of sad sometimes when people attach their self-worth to their belongings. Exactly. And that's a healthy way to look at it. Yeah. Like but, it's almost like I just feel bad because I want to help them see that they're worth more than their items. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say, I wouldn't preach to them. Yeah. Unless they ask. Because you're not better than them. Yeah. You're just like, oh, for me, that's not how I would do yeah. it. Yeah. But I think that that's admirable because... Cause I, you know, we can all get stuck in that, like, oh, I judge that or whatever. But mm -hmm. you don't do that. No. Uh, and I like that. Well, I have friends that are that love. I know. Nice things. Our friend you know? Gina, she loves nice. She yeah. loves brands and nice things. Yeah. But you're not like <laughs> stupid Gina. It doesn't define her as a person. No. No. And Gina's way deeper and cooler She's person awesome. than just that. But that also isn't what that also doesn't simplify Gina either. Yeah. Like that's what I mean. Like just if you like a Michael Kors bag that doesn't make you a simple ass bitch. Yeah. And that's what I think people fuck up on is they go, well that's a type and that's a stereotype and that's a stereotype. And you mm -hmm. could cut people down that way if you want to, but I don't know. I choose I ch I don't think that's healthy. Yeah. Agree. But I do think it's a great vector for an attack if I'm doing a roast. Oh, for sure. Thank you. And that's um, how you should be using those things. Well, that's it's a it's a it's a hilariously productive way to to like nudge ju yeah, yeah. jab somebody, but you don't really think that about them. No, exactly. Yeah, that's why I like friends that can take a roast. It's like uh, I love when someone gets a good roast on it's me. It's great. Like I when love I'm it too. like 
it's not too harsh, but it's like a, a little bit of truth that like they put a little curve on. I love it. Yeah. Um, okay, next one. I kind of said it already. You genuinely want to understand everyone from any walk of life on any topic. Yeah. Like I, I like that about you. That's true. Same with you. I think you do it better than I do. Hmm. True. But I think I, I think I have the same interest that you have. You do, yeah. But sometimes I feel the need to, um, I don't know what it is. So yeah, sometimes if somebody's talking about something mm -hmm. and I'm hearing it, I, and I kind of, and it's something that I think is bullshit. Yeah. I kind of want to just jump and start calling bullshit. Yeah. But I think you're way better at just listening. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And again, I'm, I don't like that about myself. I just, it's like an, on, an autoimmune response sometimes. Well, it's like playing poker. Like, so you don't get to learn anything about the person if you automatically, if you start, start in that way. So if it's like someone's bluffing on a hand, mm -hmm. I'm going to take them for their word at first, yeah. even if I think they might be bluffing yeah. until they show me over and over again that they bluff a lot on their hands. So I watch how they play for a while and then I can be like, okay, I get when they start bluffing. Like they always do this when they bluff, they always do that and you can get more specific. Right. But if you right away start calling them their bluff and like calling them a bluffer, they're not gonna do it anymore. Right. And they're, you, then now you don't know. Now you don't know if they're a bluffer or not because you called it too early. That makes sense. And everything can be a poker analogy. All right, clearly <laughs> that's what you're obsessed with right now. Um. Okay, I think the last thing is, well, there's two last things, but the biggest thing is if anyone knew the things that you've gone through for your friends, mm. I think that a statue would be built of you. Oh and, my God. And your big fucking ass. <laughs> Stupid. Because it would take a lot of stone, it'd be expensive. People have no idea, they'll never know, but the things that you've done for your friends that I've seen up close and personal have been unbelievable, and I respect you so much and admire you for it. Well, thank you. Yeah. Aww, that's sweet. But it just sucks because nobody says it, so I'll say it. Well, thank you. Uh, even some of your friends don't say it, so fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and lastly, you know, she's good at games and fuck her for Mario Party. And <laughs> in probably, poker? Probably poker as soon as well. That's what I, I got a poker set for our anniversary. That was my gift from my husband. So, so I can get a my lot of poker. So I can get my ass professionally beat by a, on a professional <laughs> poker set. So I'm excited about that. Well, thank you for this topic, Steve. No, I was not expecting it at I'm, all. I have a hard time receiving compliments, but I tried to just say thank you. I made you sit through an hour of it. And almost. that's very nice. And I, I like that it was more of a teaching aspect. Yeah, no, it, it's not about just me coming all over you. Yeah. Because I did that last night. It's yeah, a, It's exactly. about me help like, coming inside me yes no no well no last night again okay no but this is about trying to help other people have someone to relate to because i i i relate to you and i have learned a lot from you and i think that i learned more from someone like you than i learned from someone who just i think feels out of touch even if they're not mm. that's all i like that yeah well that's great you bet well, thank you for listening if you're still here. And uh, if you are, can you please go rate us five stars? Oh, it helps so much, the, guys. On the Apple, on the Apple tunes. Yeah. Because that helps. Um, also, if you want to check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash sticky. We are fully funded by Patreon now, um, yep. especially since this YouTube channel doesn't have, isn't monetized 90% of the time. It was called a federal <laughs> manufacturer's... Oh yeah, they thought, I'll, I'll put I it mean, in the update video, but yeah, like last year they, they called my channel you. a guns arms manufacturing channel that's selling firearms to people. So figure that so, out. So yeah. The, like I know clearly. I've been working out lately, but I don't think it's been that crazy. <laughs> With these guns. With these guns on the, on, the on the channel. Yeah. I would never sell them. So. <laughs> anyway, we love you guys. We'll Thank see you, so much, you guys. next time. Bye. -bye. Bye.